Hello, I'm Amber Tuman. Um, I'm the education lead for the Kansas Permaculture Institute. I teach permaculture design at KU and through the Institute. And today we are going to be doing a biochar burn using an in-ground trench. You've all had a campfire, right? So we've seen wood go from looking like wood to looking like ash. So about the halfway point in that is char, black. Right. So chemically what's happened is the fire has gotten the wood hot enough to break the chemical bonds um, for most of your volatile chemicals, right? And what's left is almost entirely carbon. Um, so in this wood is a whole bunch of carbon to carbon bonds that are very strong. So a fire that's less than about 800 degrees is not hot enough to break that bond. Uh, but it'll break off everything else. <laughs> Um, and that's really the stage that we want to stop it, because we want that carbon matrix. Right? If you look at it under a microscope, it looks like a sponge, because all the pockets where that other stuff burned off are left as air gaps. And the carbon, chemically, I don't know if thinking about like chemistry class brings back like PTSD or anything, <laughs> but little like lines coming out from carbons that are available spots for things to bond, like that's what we want. We want lots and lots of available bonding sites and lots of holes in that matrix, that porous matrix. So what that'll do for us, um, once we get, once we introduce some kind of, um, I don't know, a good thing. So that, <laughs> that good thing can be microbes. You can mix it with um, a, a liquid fertilizer like fish emulsion or with urine. Like you can pee on biochar to inoculate it. You can mix it 50-50 uh, with a good compost, wet it down, turn it a couple of days, and that will inoculate it. Um, we're like chicken compost. Absolutely. Actually, spreading biochar in chicken bedding will both make it not stink and will thoroughly inoculate it. Um, and then when you take out that compost and bedding, it's already there, right? That's biochar didn't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we want to fill up all of those pore spaces and all of those open receptors before we put it in the soil. Otherwise, it will suck all that stuff out of the soil and your short-term effect will be less nutrient availability for everything else. Right, so we want to introduce it to soil already full up. <laughs> While this is going, I also want to talk a little bit about the kind of macro level coolness that is biochar and carbon sequestration. Right? So <laughs> if we look at the, the carbon cycle, right, all the material we're working with is carbon that was pulled out of the air by a tree and used to build the body of the tree. Right. So this has been pulled out of the air once already. If I take this and run it through a wood chipper and use it as mulch in my garden, or I put it in a hugel culture bed, or I put it, you know, I use it for something else where it's going to naturally decompose. All of that carbon will eventually off gas back into the atmosphere. All right, it'll cycle. And that's why we have a carbon cycle. Um, which means we can get net sequestration by increasing the amount of living matter that we're working with. That's why planting forests work, right? We have more total carbon in existence in living things, right? So the amount of it that's breaking down is being immediately recaptured in new plant matter, right? And that works. On a global level, we have passed the point where that is enough to get enough carbon out of the atmosphere. <laughs> like even if we do ecosystem restoration and restore all of the global forests, we will still have too much carbon in the atmosphere. This form of carbon, is virtually completely chemically stable. We would have to somehow separate it from soil and light it on fire again to re-volatize it into the atmosphere, which means the char we make today is effectively permanently sequestered carbon out of the atmosphere. Like they have found soils in the Amazon, they call it terra preta. There's a lot of really cool articles if you wanna like Google that, that keyword, um, that is biochar made two or 3,000 years ago. From that is, forests? Yeah that is still forming <laughs> the most fertile agricultural soils in the world. And so, you know, what we're doing here is cool and fun and it'll grow a great garden, like it will, <laughs> absolutely. Especially nightshades as a random tidbit. Um, but it's also a small piece of, of being part of a larger solution, right? Of getting carbon out of the atmosphere. So the plants are going to be using what is bonded to the carbon, not actually the carbon Correct. itself. Yeah, it's like a hotel for nutrients and microbes. And so effectively what happens, um, the, the open receptors on those carbon atoms will hold other things, but biologically it's pretty easy to pull it back off. And 
so it'll hold excess nitrogen, like from your chicken manure, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not very hard for a microbe or a, or a root to pull it back off the carbon. Right? So it also has all those microbes in there that makes that nitrogen available for the roots too. Exactly. So it helps a bunch. Exactly. So the, the chemical bond of the char is pretty weak by biological standards. And so it's just like a storehouse. And then the pores themselves form anaerobic pockets for certain soil microbes that we need. So for example, your nitrogen fixing bacteria require an anaerobic environment, non-air. Right? And normally they get it because fungi pack <laughs> pack soil molecules together and make a happy home, right? For your, not the root knot. Your nitrogen fixing plants do that with nodules. But there's bacteria in the soil that does that anyway. You don't have to have a nitrogen fixing plant. It, but they are anaerobic bacteria. So the char makes a home for them. It's a little hotel where they can move in and do their little thing and then microbes and roots can reach in and be like, hey, I would like some of that nitrogen in exchange for the sugar. And all of these exchanges happen, right? Um, the form of char will also open up a heavy soil. So if you happen to be working with clay, right, which was where my first garden was, was in heavy clay. Um, all right, this is looking good. Um, then this will keep the clay from collapsing back on itself. Because if you've ever worked with a clay soil, you know you add organic matter and the next year you're right back to concrete and you add organic matter and you're right back to concrete. And as always, like, subscribe, follow the Patreon link in the comments. Thanks.